There is no doubt that the Galaxy S21 Ultra was a huge hit in 2021. I mean, Samsung kind of learned from all their mistakes with the Galaxy S20 Ultra, and they made a truly amazing smartphone. But now, one year later, with the introduction of the Galaxy S22 Ultra, is the S21 Ultra still worth taking a look at? Or are you better off just going with the latest and greatest from Samsung? Hey guys, welcome to Retether Tech. My name is Jonathan and I've had the S21 Ultra for over a year now. And this has been my experience with Samsung's flagship from last year. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how the Galaxy S21 Ultra has held up over the past year and if it's still worth taking a look at today. Now, performance-wise, this phone is only a year old. So it's really no surprise that it still performs great. Mine has the Snapdragon 888 processor inside, 12 gigabytes of RAM, and this phone is still quick and speedy. Applications open up quickly. This phone can really handle any mobile gaming that you throw at it if that's your thing. And really, Samsung has done a great job with One UI so that their phones don't really slow over time like they used to. Everyone remembers how horrible it was to have a two-year-old Samsung phone because that software would just really slow down the experience. You don't have that with One UI, at least I haven't had that with the Galaxy S21 Ultra and One UI. Battery life is still really impressive. The 5,000 milliamp hour battery inside still gets me through a full day, no problem. In fact, this phone is actually getting better battery life than the Galaxy S22 Ultra that Samsung just released. There's been some comparison videos on the battery life for the S21 Ultra and the S22 Ultra. And in those videos, it actually shows that the S21 Ultra outlasts the S22 Ultra. Now they both have the same size battery inside, 5,000 milliamp hours so it's kind of weird that an older one-year-old phone is outlasting a newer phone of course mine probably doesn't perform better than the galaxy s22 ultra because it does have a one-year-old battery inside but they're showing those comparisons with a new s21 ultra and a new s22 ultra so maybe it has something to do with the s pen that's inside the s22 ultra or maybe the processor inside the newer phone just sips a little bit more battery not sure what the case is but this phone does actually perform better, at least in the videos that I've seen, than the S22 Ultra when it comes to battery life. In fact, that's not the only thing that this phone does better than the S22 Ultra. Samsung actually dropped the amount of RAM, the starting RAM that you get on the Ultra phones this year. Instead of 12, it only starts at eight gigabytes. So this phone has 12 gigabytes of RAM, you start off with only eight gigabytes of RAM with the S22 Ultra. You can go up to 12 gigabytes of storage on the S22 Ultra with the higher storage versions of that phone, but on the higher storage capacity versions of the S21 Ultra, you actually get 16 gigabytes of RAM. So you're actually getting four gigs less on the newer phone. Not sure why Samsung decided to reduce the amount of memory your phone is gonna have, but they did that this year, so you're actually getting more RAM with the older phone. So yeah, one year later performance wise, this phone still holds up, battery is still great, there's no slowdowns when it comes to software, and actually in some ways it's actually better than this year's flagship, the S22 Ultra. Now let's talk design, because I've loved the design of this phone ever since it was released. I love the matte finish on the back, the camera bump. I actually like the camera bump design on the back. Of course, I wish there was no camera bump, but I do love what Samsung did here with the bump. They actually kind of embraced it and made it look nicer than their previous phones. Even one year later, I still look at this phone's design and I actually prefer it over other phones that have been released so far this year, including the S22 Ultra. Honestly, I'm just not a fan of the individual camera sensors protruding from the back of the phone. I just don't like what Samsung did there with the camera bump. It just looks a little weird to me and I much prefer what Samsung did with the Galaxy S21 Ultra's camera bump. Now the S22 Ultra also has a more of a, a note look to it. It has squared off edges, but I actually prefer the look of the Galaxy S21 Ultra with its more rounded corners. I've always just preferred that look, the S look over the note design. That's more of a personal preference though. You might prefer the look of the S22 Ultra and you might prefer that it actually looks more like a note phone with those squared off edges. Now one major thing about the design of this phone, well maybe a major thing for some people, 
is that there's no S Pen built in to the S21 Ultra. Now you still have support for the S Pen on the S21 Ultra, but you have to go and purchase the S Pen separately, but there's nowhere to actually store or house the S Pen like the S22 Ultra has now. You can buy this case that Samsung sells that actually comes with an S Pen and it actually holds the S Pen inside the case. But I can honestly say this case is horrible. I don't like it. I don't like using it. I don't like how the slot for the S Pen is on the side of the phone. It just makes holding the phone, the Galaxy S21 Ultra, really awkward. And it just makes an already huge phone even bigger because that case is kind of bulky. So if you love the S Pen and you need it, well, that's definitely a flaw when it comes to the S21 Ultra. But I will say, I've had an S Pen before, I've had a Note Phone before, I've had the S Pen with the S21 Ultra, and I've used it for maybe the first month or so, and then I just tend to forget about it. It's not a huge deal for me. Maybe it is for you. If it is, that's something to consider with the S21 Ultra. Now, the display on here is a large 6.8 inch Quad HD Plus display with 120 hertz refresh rate, and it still holds up. Actually, that doesn't even describe it. This display is still one of the best you can find on any flagship. The display along with the loud dual speakers that this phone comes with makes watching content on this phone just great. You're gonna love watching videos, movies on this phone. It's meant for that. This is a great phone for that. Even a year old Samsung display is better than most flagships today. Now when it comes to the camera, the S21 Ultra still has one of the best camera sensors you can find on any flagship. Samsung, of course, packed in a bunch of features into their camera system and it's still capable of capturing amazing photos. It doesn't have all of that low light software features the S22 Ultra has, but it's still able to capture some pretty impressive night mode shots. 100 times space zoom on this thing is still pretty impressive, but I will say one year later, I don't really use that feature too much. So it's more of a good feature to have but it's not something you need to have. Did that make sense? It's a cool feature to have, but it's not a necessity. But the flexibility this camera offers, that's one of the things I love about this phone. You're able to capture great portrait shots. There's modes like portrait video, super slow-mo, and director view, which are nice to have built into that camera software as well. You're able to capture really nice shots and great video with this phone. You're not gonna be disappointed by the shots and the video you get from this camera system. The point is, the camera is still great, even a year later. You won't notice a huge difference between last year's S21 Ultra and this year's flagships when it comes to smartphone photography. So the question is, is the Galaxy S21 Ultra still worth taking a look at even today? But when you look at the used market, you can find this phone for about $700 or even less if you really look for a good deal. The S22 Ultra that was just released by Samsung, that one starts at $1,200 for 128 gigabytes of storage. The S21 Ultra and the S22 Ultra both have the same storage configurations, except that the S22 Ultra does have the option now to go up to one terabyte of storage. It's not a huge deal for me because I'm not gonna purchase one terabyte on my smartphone, but if you want the most storage possible, that may be something to consider. But if you look at that price tag, about $700, the S22 Ultra starts at $1,200. Is it really worth paying $500 more to go with the S22 Ultra? I mean, this phone, the S21 Ultra, has pretty much the same great display minus the ability to get as bright as the S22 Ultra. There's of course no built-in S Pen on the S21 Ultra, and it's also missing some software features that the S22 Ultra that Samsung introduced with that phone this year. And obviously this phone doesn't have the latest chipset inside like the S22 Ultra has, but it still does have enough power to do mostly everything that phone can. So in the end, one year later, is it worth taking a look at the S21 Ultra? It's definitely worth taking a look at the S21 Ultra. It would be a mistake not to save some money and go with last year's Samsung flagship, especially because this phone was just really great. I'm not sure if it was because Samsung did an amazing job with the S21 Ultra or 
because they just didn't do enough to differentiate the S22 Ultra from last year's phone. But if you're looking for a great smartphone, I definitely recommend you take a look at the S21 Ultra. But what do you guys think? Do you prefer going with the latest and greatest from Samsung? Is having that S Pen built into the S22 Ultra, is that worth it for you? Or would you prefer to save some money and go with last year's flagship? Let me know with a comment down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos just like this one on tech news, reviews, and opinions, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our new videos. And I'll see you on the next one.